الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صبغة الله ومن أحسن من الله صبغة ونحن له عابدون صدق الله العظيم This is the ayah that I have recited to you a couple weeks ago when I was here In this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-Baqarah says صبغة الله The way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And what could be a better way than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And along those lines, we started from the beginning of the Qur'an, and we started to look at some of the verses in the Qur'an, right from the beginning in Surah Al-Fatiha, and among the first hundreds of verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, what are the verses that attribute to the idea that things that a believer should do and things that believers should not do? We will continue that journey and now we're going to be looking at some other set of ayahs from Surah Al-Baqarah. Some of the ayahs come from the first hundred and then if, we, if time allows we may go past the first hundred ayahs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some of the traits of believers and some of the traits of disbelievers and some of the traits of hypocrites. So things that one must do and one must not do. So we're going to start out with the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُمُوا الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Do not try to change things around to suit your needs. Some people over the period of time get accustomed of doing that, that to make somebody happy, or to make certain group of people happy, or to shine in front of some people, they try to hide the truth. By giving half story or try to sugarcoat the underlying details. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying if you know the truth, don't hide the truth. As truth is the reason that this religion was given. And this religion is based on truth. The messenger that was picked even before the people, that before he told people about his prophethood, he was known in the community as as sadiq al-Ameen. The truthful, the trustworthy. And when the Prophet entered the Makkah, and he was destroying the idols, he was constantly reciting the ayah, جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَحَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُقَ That the truth has come, and false will not stay. Anyway, false will not, was not there to stay. So this is truth. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to be a truthful ummah and the people of knowledge shouldn't hide the knowledge. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Establish prayers. Don't just pray yourself individually, promote it. Establish it as a community, as a jama'ah. And hold on to it steadfastly. وَآتُ الزَّكَاءِ And give charity. Sometimes the word zakah in the Qur'an is used specially for zakah. Sometimes zakah is being the most obligatory charity is inclusive of all kinds of charities. So not limited to zakah as per se. It includes all kinds of charity. And give charity. وَرْكَعُ مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ And join the community. Do not make separate entities for yourself based on caste, creed, nationalism, on any grounds. Join the people in B1. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's houses must be kept as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's houses and shouldn't become a house of a particular group of people that nobody else is welcome. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the next ayah says, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ That you go around and start telling people, you do good, you do good, you do good, but you forget about yourself. However, the idea was that you must do good yourself first before you start going out to others and say, okay, you do good, good, you do good, you do good. And then when you're starting with others, start with your own family first. You do good. As a family, you do good. And then you start spreading out. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was asked to go out and spread the message, the idea was first to be given out to the family members. وَأَنذِرَ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Your close family should be the first one to receive this. So, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is specifically talking about to the people of the book. But aren't we also the people of the book now? We have a Qur'an. وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ And you hold the scripture of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Don't you think? So now look at the ayah again. أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ If you look around us, you're going to find many examples in the ummah. And that's the whole idea of bringing it. Because when we go over these ayahs, we think, Oh, these are for Yahud, forget about them. These are for Nasara, forget about them. These are for Mushrikeen, forget No, these are bad things people have done before us. So Allah is giving us as an example, don't do this. Quran is the book for entire beings. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Hold steadfast to what? Sabr, patience. What? Salah and prayers. Now a lot of the time, people think that sabr or patience means that if I am hit with some sad news, bad news, that's what, that's what I'm hold on, supposed to hold on to myself. That's one form. Sabr has many forms. For example, when people will enter the Jannah, the angels will tell them, these are the blessings for you because you were patient over there. What were they patient about? Not everybody was getting turmoil, not everybody was getting oppressed because we are holding ourselves from sins. They're so tempting. You want to do them. But you realize that it's short-lived. How am I going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I just do it? So you hold on to those ideas and you said, no, go away. And then you remind yourself, if this idea ever come back to you, remember it's a sin, don't follow this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that hold your grounds, be patient. And when shaitan attacks you, start praying. Start establishing that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we not find connection in salah? Because we have lost the spirit of salah. We do not understand the importance of salah. Salah is a way for us to be cut off from the rest and to be in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you ever paid attention to the very first thing that is introduced to us in the Quran? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A lot of the time you look at the translation, what does it say? In the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most gracious and the most merciful. Now if you notice in that whole translation, there is not a single mention of any khalq. No creation is mentioned. It doesn't say, I start in the name of Allah. There is no I. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Now, ulama, when they wrote the tafsir of Bismillah, they wrote the tafsir on the letter Ba itself. The importance of the letter Ba in Bismillah. And I will give you a conclusive couple statements here, because that tafsir itself is very long. That the Ba of Bismillah is basically a way of telling yourself 
that now I want to start my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so I want to disconnect myself with everything else. And look at the rest of the statement, it talks about just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't talk about anything else. And right before that you say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ I want to come in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan al-rajim. After you ask for that, then you say, I want to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful. And then you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I want to thank Him for everything that He has given me. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The one who gives unconditionally and the most merciful. Ar-Rahman fi dunya wa rahim fi al-akhirah. And He is my Lord. Maliki yawm al I will going to be one day answerable in front of him. So I will going to start now. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. I'll ask now. Oh Allah, it is you only who we worship. It is only you who we ask help from. So please guide us. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim. And give us, show us the path of those that have been guided before us. And so, now think about it. When the servant is standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this mindset, you are going to be having such a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll forget about the rest of the world. Now think about it. Look, we have to look back at ourselves. How were we this last weekend? Kids, adults, grown up. Oh my God. Will this going to be a touchdown or no? If anybody tries to disturb you, we'll talk later. And this is a simple touchdown. You're not even playing. You're not even getting paid for that. Somebody else is playing who's not even your state team. And your concentration is so high. And when we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our concentration is compared to that negligible. So that Super Bowl somehow has taken a super importance in our life. Those three hours, I don't want to leave. Even if it extends half an hour, I'm okay. He said, okay, that's more game. But in the Salah, if it goes a minute more, I'm like, oh my God, it's a little too long, isn't it? Why does he have to recite Surah Al-Baqarah ayahs? I don't even know I'm going to end. Well, he's going to recite three ayahs or four or ten. Because we have lost the connection. Even if you don't understand anything, think about it, where are you standing? And in front of who are you standing? That should be enough. You know, when I was growing up, we used to live in countries that I had no idea what the khatib was saying. I didn't understand the language. But that did not force me for not going for khutbah. Even though I didn't understand the language. But then there was a time when I started understanding it. Because the idea was that I'm going in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I understand a little bit of it, none of it, all of it, I'm getting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now people have come to a point where it's like, you know what, that, that guy, is English is broken, I don't know, I, don't, I, don't, I was going to go late to the khutbah. Are you going for your personal? Or are you going for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because the moment you are late, and the guy stands here, the angel has closed his book. The angel that was standing outside writing the names of the people who arrived on time. So your name is not in that book. If you want your name to be in that book, it doesn't matter if the guy has a broken English or not. What's important is I get recorded. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَاسْتَعِنُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ Yes, it is difficult at times, but not for those people. إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Those who are submissive. Are we not submissive? We are submissive, that's why we are called Muslims. That's exactly what Muslim means. A person who is submissive 
to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He says, I'm going to do it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, on your nafs, it could be harsh, but not for those who are submissive. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salah. And then in the next part, I'm going to skip 40 samayas. I'm going to go where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the children of Israel again. And says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ We took oath, a covenant from Banu Israel. لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Do not worship anybody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Be extremely good to your parents. Has that rule changed? No. Have we changed? Yes. But the rule has not changed. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And it doesn't stop there. وَذِلْقُرْبَى And take care of your relatives. That starts with your siblings. Your brothers, your sisters, their kids, your nephews, your nieces, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, goes on like that. Be nice to their relatives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has let that rule many thousands of years. وَذِلْ قُرْبَ And then وَلْيَتَابَ After that, orphans. The orphans. وَالْمَسَاكِينَ The needy people. And then, Something, if a person says, I can't afford to help others because I'm poor. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. At least you can be nice to other people. It doesn't take money to be nice. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. Talk nicely. It doesn't take a lot of effort. We see so many people who don't even smile. As if it takes money for them to smile. And they're always like this as if they're a soldier in the battlefield. They don't even bend over, their necks are so stiff. And you meet them and you're like, am I meeting a human being or a robot? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what? Be nice. Your body language counts. I've seen people with smiley faces with smirks. And you could tell how positive they are. So body language counts. We have to be nice. That's what the Prophet taught us to be nice. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. And then, also, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ Establish prayers. وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ Same thing, give out charities. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says to the people of the book, Bani Israel, ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ But you turn back. But you turn back from that promise. Ooh, are we fulfilling it? We have the same promise. Now think about it. If the messengers were still to come, we would have been talked about in their books. That these were the people. ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِّنْكُمْ Except some of you. وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ And you were refusing. We go in denials too. Oh, it's too difficult. How I can do it? Now, think about it like this. Who gave us the book? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who created me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now look at the ayah. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقُ he who created you wouldn't know your complexities of life. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقُ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ And he is microscopically looking at you because he created you and he's all-knowing. So who are we giving an excuse to? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many ayahs in the Qur'an only for us to look at and understand. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, why don't you think? Why don't you think? You have to think and expand and discuss, share the positivity, share the goodness. 
And this is not limited to religion. It is in all walks of life. Somebody is doing research these days that the diabetic patients would not have to take the insulin needles anymore. There should be an alternate way for it to save them. This is a goodness we're talking about. Somebody is printing 3D rips so that somebody's rib can be replaced. Somebody's printing 3D arms, 3D feet. Why? Out of their own time, out of their own money, why, why do they have to do that? Because there's goodness. And that's exactly what this faith wants from all of us and the people around us. Be good. It is easy to be angry. It is easy to be mad. But it is difficult to be good. That's why the Prophet said, you know the best among you who is the best wrestler? The one who can overcome his anger. Because that's a difficult thing to do. So many times we just lose it. Because it's hard. And if you replace it with goodness, then it's a positive energy. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم